Good evening and welcome to Midnight Movie Club and my review of Love, Death, Robots. This is my first ever series review and I've decided to differentiate series reviews to my movie reviews a little. I will score them out of 10 instead of my usual 5. In this review I may name drop certain episodes and maybe not others but do not worry I am taking every episode into account for my overall score for the series. I will also talk more about my top 3 episodes and why they are my favourites of the series, likewise for my bottom 2 least favourite episodes. If there are any episodes you want me to take a closer look on, break down and explore here on the channel, then feel free to tell me in the comment section down below. I could bring a lot more content on the series than just a review if you would all like to see that. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Love, Death and Robots is a collection of animated shorts that range from science fiction to horror to romance to comedy and to many more genres. It is a dark, mature, adults only NSFW anthology series that so effortlessly blends these genres with fantastic animation. It has to be one of the most creative series I have seen to date. Together, Tim Miller created the series with David Fincher executive producing and a whole host of animation studios and writers to bring us these no-holds-barred, cyberpunk, hyper-realistic, unique, gore and neon-filled worlds with just the right pinch of comedy and heart throughout to keep you stuck to the screen. Throughout the series we travel from a London underground pilot controlled kaiju fighting ring in Sony's Edge all the way to farmers fighting off alien parasites in mech suits. We see the war in Afghanistan where the US military have deployed werewolves within their ranks to help sniff out the enemy. We also see elite special units of the Red Army fighting an unholy army of monsters in Siberia during the Second World War. We even experience the fears and dangers of hypersleep and space travel and beyond air killer rift. And how could I not mention this? We witness yogurt created by scientists become sentient and rule the world, as a petri dish dairy product runs the world better than our world's leaders. And that's just a little taste in the range of these episodes. Episode runtime ranges from the longest of 17 minutes to the shortest of 6 minutes. Even with the short, easy to digest runtimes though, you still find yourself engrossed in each story, each short provides, and you still end up caring for a lot of the characters you get to know. That's what surprised me with this series. Even though when I saw the first trailer and knew this sort of series would be right up my street, I didn't expect a lot of the episodes to carry the emotional weight they did and grip me as much as they did as well. I was happily surprised by how each episode brings its own unique style and personality, yet still felt in line with the rest. Now the first episode I want to talk about and my favourite for obvious reasons is Shapeshifters. Now if you've been around the channel for a while you will know this is no surprise as I am a huge werewolf fan but seeing them used this way was just an amazing concept that totally, totally worked. So Shapeshifters focuses on two werewolf marines in the thick of the conflict in Afghanistan. Whoever thought of werewolf soldiers in Afghanistan fighting the Taliban is a genius, but the thing is the Taliban have a werewolf of their own and soon they have to fight one of their own kind. Now it wasn't just the fantastic werewolf action scenes I loved in this, it was actually the dynamics between the two marines and the rest of their unit. I enjoyed seeing how this world treated them, the werewolves could easily turn on everyone and rule the world, but no, they fight for their country and their people and I loved that. Plus the werewolf fight and the gore in this episode were amazing, along with just an awesome werewolf design and transformation. I highly recommend this episode for obvious reasons. It also has a hyper realistic style of animation which I think fit perfectly uh, considering it was in Afghanistan and it it kind of grounded it a little more in realism even though it's such a surreal situation. The next episode I want to highlight is the first Sony's Edge. This pilot takes us to a kaiju fighting pit in the London underground where colourful characters with colourful language take control of kaiju and fight. Really, need I say more? But not only do we have brutal kaiju action, we have an awesome industrial thumping soundtrack and neon covered visuals with a very interesting and mysterious main character. 
We also get a pretty awesome and genius twist in my opinion and I really just want to see a full show set in this world of Sonny's Edge following these fighters and their kaiju in these underground fighting pits. I think that would be awesome. Now coming in third on my top 3 episodes and this was a hard one because of the competition but sitting at 3 in my opinion is Zima Boy. It may be the best actually in fact when it comes to love, death and robots as it has all 3. I found Zima Blue to be the most thought provoking episode of the series and I absolutely loved the art style. The hyper stylized animation is unlike any other episode to be honest, it kind of looked like an animated version of the GTA Vice City cover art, at least it reminded me of it anyway. As for the narrative of Zima Blue, it takes a far more philosophical route to its big mind blowing finale. It tells the story of a reclusive artist whose masterpieces have all started to incorporate the same colour of blue for some reason, and when you get to the end and know why, it's a rather beautiful reason. To me, this episode was a piece of art. Now those are the 3 episodes I loved the most but coming close to the top 3 were Beyond the Killer Riff which really plays in the fear of the unknown and has me scared of hypersleep if it ever becomes a thing in my lifetime and Suits which tells the story of farmers and mechs fighting off an alien invasion killing their livestock. They were both very close to busting into the top 3 and maybe on any other given day they will. But now onto the episodes I didn't like so much, my bottom two episodes. Now even though I feel these episodes were the worst of the bunch, just remember they had hard, hard competition. These two episodes are still entertaining, just not as much as the rest in my opinion. Second bottom we have Fish Night. Now first up I do want to say I love the concept of this short, I just wish that they had done more with it. It shows us two salesmen who break down in the middle of the desert and begin to see ghosts of prehistoric fish at night. The art style is cool and it reminds me of the Telltale Walking Dead and Wolf Among Us games but sadly the awesome concept and animation just weren't enough to interest me as nothing of much importance happens and the characters themselves never really go through a proper arc unlike other episodes. Now sadly at the bottom of my list we have Ice Age. This is the only episode that was live action with a little bit of animation in there too. It shows as a young couple who when they move into their new home find a miniature civilization living in their fridge. Now even though it was cool to see Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Topher Grace watch this civilization in their fridge grow, it just never came to much really and I'd pass on it if I had to pass on any episode. Also I would have just preferred if all the episodes were animated. As as soon as I seen live action, I kind of went, whoa, what's going on here? After seeing so much animation, it was just kind of jarring and took me out of it a little bit, especially, especially if you binge them all in one go. Anyway, all round, I absolutely loved, loved Death and Robots. I felt like it was almost made specifically for me as it contains so many different things that I am a fan of and I really do hope we get a season 2 as soon as possible. It's great fun to watch and all round a great laugh. It has fantastic art design, voice acting, soundtrack and cinematography all within awesome original short stories where some do really tug your heartstrings while others give you badass bloody violence. For me, it was the whole package and for my first ever series review, I'm going to give Love Death Robots a 10 out of 10 rating. I want more, no, I need more, so here's hoping. If you enjoyed this video drop it a like and if you haven't already then subscribe to join the club. As always, thank you very much for watching and good night.